It's an unlikely story. I hated Shakespeare as a kid. Hated it in high school in the States. Didn't get the dirty bits in Romeo that everybody else got. And never took Shakespeare at university. But in the late uh, 70s, when everybody was flying back and forth from the States, thanks to Freddie Laker and his $200 fares, I found myself in London and going to the theater with my big brother. And we loved it. And we started seeing Shakespeare plays. And I really loved them. And I was hooked. It was like a drug that was better than any of the other drugs I was experimenting with at the time. And I found myself coming back summer after summer after holding down uh, some kind of job to make enough money to come over, sleep in church basements or youth hostels. And in the course of five or six years, I might have seen 150 spectacular Shakespeare productions. Back in the late 80s, when all other scholars were rushing to cultural materialism or deconstruction or new historicism, I became really interested in what was it like to understand a year in the life of an Elizabethan writer or writers. And I chose arbitrarily and luckily 1599. And I began to read everything written in that year. And that over time emerged as a book about what Shakespeare himself, the greatest writer in that year, was doing in the course of 1599 and what was taking place around them at that time. It just took 15 years to figure all that out, but it was really to educate myself in every aspect of life from what the weather was, what the politics were, what the neighborhoods in London were. And I felt I'd become a better Shakespearean if I really understood that. When I finished 1599, uh, I'm sure people were expecting me to write 1600 and 1601 and in a kind of Rocky II, Rocky III way. And I thought, I've done justice to the extent that I could to an Elizabethan Shakespeare. But for the last decade of his career, Shakespeare was a king's man, a Jacobean playwright. And I really overlooked that. And I thought, it's time to educate myself about that and spend 10 years really thinking about Shakespeare at his greatest moment as a Jacobean playwright, the year in which he finished King Lear, wrote Macbeth, and then wrote Antony and Cleopatra. The story that we experience of our own age is quite different than the one that's written retrospectively. So the kind of history I'm trying to write is a day-to-day, week-to-week history. And that required immersing myself in the historical materials of what survives and letters and political documents and stories and poems and everything else from the time. So over a decade of work allowed me to reimagine what the quite traumatic uh, events were that Shakespeare and his fellow Jacobeans were experiencing in the course of this year. Sixteen oh six was a great year for Shakespeare, and it was a terrible year for England. And the two are not unrelated. The gunpowder plot had just been exposed a month earlier. The early months of the year were spent torturing, trying, and executing, dismembering those who had done this, and then searching even further for their Jesuit handlers, and then searching even further for the extent to which loyalty to the Pope had supplanted loyalty to King James in England. So that created a great deal of uncertainty, not only in London, but in places like the Midlands, where there was a, a short-lived uprising in the aftermath of the gunpowder plot. So this was a year of, to use a Shakespearean term, uncertainties or uncertainties. And it's a drumbeat that continues from the very beginning of the year up until Lancelot Andrews' spectacular sermon at Christmas time, talking about how dark and disturbing a year this has been. I've never tired of thinking hard about Shakespeare's work. For the past three months, I've worked with a group of actors on Macbeth, taking it into prisons in New York City and New York State and watching individuals who've never seen a Shakespeare play respond to this 
and it is an overwhelming experience. You don't have to have a PhD in literature or have a great teacher in secondary school to value these plays. These are people who are at the extreme of our society and deprived of many of the opportunities the rest of us have, and yet they're experiencing viscerally Lady Macbeth and Macbeth plotting or Malcolm at the end assuming power. And it reminds me of how powerful Shakespeare is and increasingly how global his reach.